Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God be praised. Hallelujah. I do apologize for being late this evening. Having a little technical difficulty this evening for the class. So I pray that you continue to pray for us and, and continue to be encouraged and be enriched in your spirit and know that God has you in the palm of his hand that he's working things out in your favor. doesn't matter what you encounter, you keep standing on the word of truth. It's the word that will set you free. God has the power to break every yoke, every chain, every attack the enemy brings against you. It cannot prosper because the spirit of God lives inside of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to dive right into my lesson tonight. Put up a word of prayer. Move forward. I had a great lesson last week. I was just listening to it today again and very enriching and encouraging to my spirit. And I pray that it empowers you in your Christian walk with the Lord to keep standing on the word. It doesn't matter what you go through in this life, you got to remember that God is on your side as the reigning king. He's sovereign. He's holy. There's no God like Jehovah. It doesn't matter what you go through in this life. The devil is a lie. Jesus Christ is Lord. He conquered all of our foes and redeemed our lives from the curse of the law of sin and death. And he gave us the victory. It's up to you to believe for yourself that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what you feel like, what it looks like, what it doesn't seem to be in your life, you got to know with confidence that God is working things out in your favor. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I come in for y'all some presence, telling you thank you, Lord God, for the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad. And, Father, I thank you, even in the midst of distractions and when electronics doesn't want to work the way it's supposed to, Father God, you still have other ways, we've got to get your message across. And I pray tonight, Father God, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation, cleanse our minds, our hearts, forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing, Father God, let us not have anything to hinder our prayers from the answer of walking in your will, your truth, your righteousness, that you will be glorified. Have your God-like will. God, we bind our minds to the mind of Christ and every attack, every assault that comes against us. Have your way, God. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you in Jesus' name. What you're doing in this moment, in this hour of our lives, God, that you will be lifted up in the midst of us, O oh God, tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, to this message. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, one thing about God, nothing catches him by surprise. And nothing catching by surprise. God knows everything you go through in life. He knows every situation that will attack you, the things you're going to be entwined in as a stronghold in your life. He even knows how to deliver and set you free. Last week, I just did a recap of chapter, uh, I was in chapter one, still in chapter one, but I did the first part of chapter one that talked about Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse 12. It says, what was that? Wait a minute, this is, excuse me. So, and if one prevails against him, two shall withstand him, and threefold cord is not easily broken. So, when you think about a three, a threefold cord, it's something that's really tight and, and strong and powerful. It can even pull a, a vehicle. That's how strong that rope is. It can hold a boat, a large boat at bay where it won't drift away because of the strength that's in that threefold cord. And when we have a threefold cord, in your life, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you have the greatest power against the enemy you could ever imagine. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what the enemy tries to influence you with. You have the ability to rise above every circumstance, every issue, every attack the enemy brings against you as you stand on the Word of God. But you got to believe for yourself that God is faithful, that will with the temptation make a way to escape that you can be able to bear what you're going through. Not saying you're not going to slip up sometime, you're not going to fall. God knows that the heart of man is prone to do evil. He knows that we have 
a sinful nature, and that sinful nature always being enticed by, by its own desires, it's always falling away into temptation, given to sin and iniquity, making mistakes, falling short of God's glory. That's why the word says, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God still gives us the, the ability to repent, to come back to him, to receive this life that's found in his word. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. So last week we talked about a demonic lockdown, how the author was uh, bringing the clarity of a, of, a, of a vision that she had and, and had from the Lord, and how this vision had begun to open the, open the mind to begin to, re to see things spiritually of a prison. How the enemy holds God's people in a prison and he holds you into a place of confinement when you can't find yourself being set free. And the demonic lockdown is a dark, dark place. It's a, a lonely place. It's a place without the absence of God. When you can't sense God's presence, you can't feel his power moving in your life, you can't even, even have a desire to want to worship him because you have got so far lost in your mess, your mess has put you in a place of a demonic lockdown. And in that lockdown, there's a certain, certain urgency the enemy has to keep you bound. He wants to keep you in a place where you're locked down, where you're overwhelmed with all the struggles and the obstacles of life and, and, and keep you in a place where you never rise above and be set free from the inside out. That confinement, it will cause you to get to a place where hope becomes deferred. We talked about that last week, how hope becomes deferred. That means your hope has been seized. You don't have no more expectation. You don't have no more dreams and visions. You don't feel like you're going to ever get any better in your life. The things will continue to be chaotic, to be Confucius in your life. You feel that nothing's going to work out for you. But nevertheless, that's a demonic lockdown. That demonic lockdown will seize your hope. It will seize your eyesight from seeing what God is doing, the blessings and the favor upon your life that God has for you, and the enemy will keep you in a blindness where you cannot see your way out of your situation. I, I tell you, many times we are attacked. Many times we're broken and, and we're stripped of our power because we allow our mouths to be used by the enemy in negativity. People don't realize that the more I speak negative over myself, the more power I give to the enemy to seize my hope and my expectation to put me in a prison. And in that place, I can't break free. So he holds me in tight grips and shackles and chains where I cannot see myself coming out. So you become comfortable, comfortable in your mess. And that's what God is saying tonight. Don't allow yourself to be in a place of demonic lockdown. If you have been in that place, I encourage you, repent, return to the Lord, that he would abundantly pardon, that he would restore you, bring you back to right standing, right relationship with the Son, Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, cleansing and perfecting everything that concerns your life. But only you have the power to do it because you have to believe. Hope deferred is taking away your belief. Take away your system to trust God in his word. The word tells us that Abraham, when God called Abraham to be the father of many nations, he told Abraham, you can look at the stars, as many as you can number, that I have given unto you. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. What if Abraham had said, well, God, I'm pushing 100 years old, Sarah, you know, 99, whatever the case is. I'm not going to make it. I don't believe it's going to happen because we're already close to death. What if he had just gotten into a negative mindset and said, you know what? It ain't going to work. God, I hear what you're saying, but it ain't going to work. Then what works is Sarah laughed. She couldn't believe herself. That's why she laughed at God. And God had to prove to her that I'm a God of the impossibilities. It doesn't matter how old you are. With God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a vision for your life. You can guarantee you can go to the bank on it. He's going to fulfill that plan in your life. You can be 89 years old, 100 years old, 120 years old. doesn't matter how old you are. Whatever God has for you, it is for you. And the devil cannot take it away. Only you can allow him to take it away because he blinds you. That's what the word says. If the gospel be hid, it's here to them who are lost, whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded. 
the minds of them. If he can keep your mind blinded from truth, I'll follow after lies. If he can keep your heart broken, I'll never be healed. He can keep you in a dark place. I will never see the light of hope to get out of that place of despair. That's why David, one of the Psalms, he said, he said, I cried to the Lord. He heard me and delivered me, delivered me from going down into the pit. He was at the verge of being thrown in a pit of despair. But yet he said, I cried. I had a desperation and urgency in my spirit to call upon the name of the Lord. And God delivered me. What's your excuse today? Where are you today? That's a question God has for you. Where are you today? Are you in the place where your hope has been seized? Are you in a place where your vision and dreams have been dampened? Your fire is going out? Your zeal is no longer there? <coughs> God is calling you out tonight. He's calling you to come out of the demonic lockdown. To come back to the place where he can strip you from your old patterns. Our old patterns are our old way of thinking. The old sinful life of thought. Because your body can't do nothing with thought don't think. Did you hear what I just said? Your body cannot do nothing until the thought thinks about something to do. If I think about sin, I'm going to do sin. If I think about love, I'm going to love. If I think about peace, I'm going to have peace. If I think about dwelling in God's presence, I'm going to dwell in his presence. Why? Because death and life is the power of the tongue. So if I keep speaking what God says to speak, even though I might have slipped into a place where I got into demonic lockdown, God says, you know what? I got the master key. I got the master key to set you free. But you got to believe it. With this lockdown, we're chained and imprisoned to the past with no hope of freedom. With the demonic lockdown, we are chained and imprisoned to the past with no hope of freedom. Satan's strategy, hear this, hear this, this is really good. Satan's strategy is to imprison us and lock us into confinement that aborts our destiny and in our increase. He wants to take away your expectation of receiving faith in God to believe all the blessings and the promise of God and yes and amen in your life. He wants to take away your increase. Because the Lord said, I will bless you beyond measures. He will cause showers of blessing to rain on you. And the enemy knows if I can get you to a place where you stop believing. Stop seeing what God has for you. He can keep you chained and in prison in a dark place. My God, my God, that is so good. We must realize However, that the enemy is planning a lockdown, we got to recognize, pay attention. You, have, <coughs> you got so many different Christians who just precariously go through life, but they call themselves Christian. They have no zeal, no ambition, no desire, no expectations, no hunger, no thirst for righteousness. They're just satisfied living a mediocre life. And God is trying to call us out of that place of, of lukewarm, of mediocrity, being lukewarm, mediocrity, where you don't even care. You're just like, whatever happens, going to happen. Where, where I'm going to be, I'm going to be. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. That's how it's going to be in my life. But God wants you to know tonight that that's not his plan for your life. Sure enough, we mess up. Sure enough, we got strongholds, we got issues, but God has the power where you are to bring deliverance. He has the power to bring freedom in your mindset. Only if you want that freedom, you can have it. Glory to God, glory to God. I tell you, God is so amazing. He's so sovereign, he's holy. With this lockdown, he wants to stop from being fruitful. Stop you from multiplying. Isn't that what God told Adam in the garden? To be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth? He wants you to stop being fruitful in your walking in the calling in the calling of your life. If I can stop from being fruitful, you never bear fruit in other people's lives when you go. 
Your fruit is your witnessing, sharing the gospel with somebody else. And when you share the gospel, it sets them free. That becomes the fruit of your labor. But God wants you to get to the place where he enlarges your house. He spread out your home. That you can be bursting at the seams. Just like when God fills us up, the psalmist says, our cups overflow. If I can get you to a place of overflow, that's that breaking forth, that enlargement, and that spreading out. Because once I overflow, have you, have you ever filled a glass of milk or a glass of juice up and one paying attention and it overflowed? What happened? It spread out, right? Started making a mess all over the table. Then even ran on the floor because you knocked it over and it fell over. Same way it is with God. God wants you to be so full till it overflows into other people's lives. We talked about this last week. Amen. He wants you to burst into the scenes. So hope deferred is coming to a place of your freedom that your destiny can be birthed through you. If Satan had his way, he would lock you down with hope deferred. If he had his way, you would not have the power to overcome anything in your life. Because that's what he wants to do in you is stop you from being productive in the kingdom of God. Going a little further. We experience the press as signifies pressure, attempting to lock us into old patterns of behaviors and block every avenue of victory. That's a pressure. I mean, my pastor went through a series for a while, a while back ago, talking about the pressure cooker, how we get put in a pressure cooker, and it's like, Everything in you just, just got you so uptight and so angry, so bitter. You become a pressure cooker. And just in that pressure cooker, everything is just trying to rise up to come out. But there's no release of the steam. So when people come around, around you that have done you no harm, nor said anything negative to you, you explode on them for no reason. All because you're mad at yourself. Because something you've done, you let other people have flicked upon you. And we have to be careful that when the pressure is applied to know how to have the right outburst with the Holy Ghost, not with the flesh. Did you catch that? Have the right response of an outburst with the Holy Spirit response, not the response of the flesh. Because the response of the flesh is destructive. It causes more problems, not just in your life, but the lives of others. The same way it is when a natural heart becomes sick, your body begins to shut down. If your heart's not maintained, you're not eating the proper food, nutrients for your body to make it, make it well, to, to keep it healthy, <coughs> your body will begin to break down. And that's the same way it is in the spirit. If I don't feed from the nutrients of the word of God, my spiritual body begins to break down, becomes afflicted and infected with the enemy diseases of sin. And it keep you from walking in your truth and righteousness that God has given you from his word. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three to five, it says it like this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's what God wants us to do. Come to the place in ourselves. We identify what is that stronghold? What is the problem I'm dealing with? What is the weakness I have? You have to identify. Because if you don't identify and begin to recognize that this is a carnal thing I'm dealing with. But the only way to defeat it is in the spirit. That's why he said the weapons of warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. But they're mighty 
God has a dunamis power, a dynamite power to destroy every negative, foul, demonic thought the enemy afflicts you with through the word by the Holy Spirit to pull down those strongholds. Strongholds, some strongholds are good and then some are bad. Because the word says the name of the Lord is a stronghold. The right you run into and it's safe. Well, here's a tower. It says tower, but it also means stronghold. But then you have a stronghold of sin that's not good. And that stronghold is destructive. That stronghold, it assassinates your purpose. It stops you from walking in the will of God. It keeps you blinded from the plan of God for your life. Keep you in darkness. But when you recognize that every high thought that comes to thy mindset, that lifts itself up above God, has to be pulled out has to be destroyed, has to be annihilated, vanish, vacant out of your life, has to be just totally put out by the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is what? His word. It says, bringing them into captivity to obedience of Christ. How do I bring my thoughts to obedience of Christ? You may ask the question yourself, what do you, what do you mean, uh, bringing my, my thought life or the, those thoughts into obedience to Christ. Here's what it means. Any thought that's not producing life is a destructive thought. That thought has to come to the place where I feed my mind with the word of God. He who the Son is set free is free indeed. Walk in the Spirit you're not filled with her flesh. Those are the thoughts that come from the word of God. That I need to infiltrate my mindset structure to reprogram my data bank. I talked about last week about the computer. If you don't have an antivirus program on your computer, a spam blocker on your computer, you leave yourself open for all your data, all your information to be exposed to hackers. In the spirit realm, it's the same way. We have a spiritual hacker called Satan. Satan is a hacker looking for a vulnerability to come into your system, to corrupt your mainframe. He can corrupt your thought life. That's your mainframe, your thought life. Get into the heart and begin to corrupt the components of your system. So every software you have installed in your system begins to malfunction because something that shouldn't be there is mimicking the software to look like the software, but yet it's bringing destruction. It's eating all your information. <coughs> Excuse me. And what God says is when the enemy comes in like a flood, my God, said so the Lord will lift a standard. He will lift up an antivirus protector, a spam blocker on your system of the database of your mind. To drive away anything to try to infiltrate your structure and begin to set you free. Hackers, we got a lot of hackers in Russia, China, all around the country, Africa. People all in different places are daily working and plotting and planning for our demise, looking for a way to infiltrate our database. Your personal computers, your work computers, your church computers, if they can get in your system, they want to steal your valuable information. And God is saying, if we're not paying attention in the spirit, the enemy does the exact same thing to a child of God. He'll make you think you're living a righteous life when you're really living a foolish life. Your house is built on sand and not on the rock. So every time the storms come, you wonder why you get the outburst of cussing somebody out so quick. Why you so quick to get angry. I used to be the same way. Be quick to get angry. You say something I don't like, I quickly got angry. But I was the type of person, I was an introvert. I held it inside. I wouldn't say nothing. But even though I know you made me mad, I wouldn't say, I'll walk around with a smile on my face, look like you ain't never done anything, but inside I'm furious. And as I begin to mature in the things of God, God had to teach me do not be hasty to become angry. 
for anger rests in the bosom of fools. And I said, God, you don't have a fool. You didn't make us to be fools. You called us to be righteous. And if God called you to be righteous, <clears throat> then why are we so easily <clears throat> excuse me, influenced to become angry? When we're supposed to be a child of God, walking in truth and righteousness. I tell you, I tell you one thing about it. When you get to the place and you realize that's an error of immaturity in your life, the Lord reveals it to you. He even gives you a solution on how to fix it. And the only way God can fix anything in our life, I say it all the time, when we yield, surrender, and release. Yield, surrender, and release every concern, every issue, every problem, every situation into his hands and allow him through the power of the Holy Spirit to lead God, direct me in the pathway I need to go that would not allow myself to give in to the desire of the flesh to hurt somebody, to retaliate, to respond the way they responded to me. I said in many, many lessons before, we as children of God have to learn how to be proactive and not reactive. Easier said than done, right? I know you're probably thinking that right now. Oh, that's easier said than done. You're right. It's easier said than done when you're not walking in the Spirit. If you're not walking in obedience in your own personal life to the Lord, you're right. It's easier said than done. But when you walking in the Spirit, it becomes easy because God said he'll make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth in your life. So it'll become easy to do in the response to the Holy Spirit. It don't become hard. It's only hard when the transgressor resists God. When God is trying to bring change, God's trying to reprove you, God trying to perfect you, God trying to make you better, that's when it becomes hard because the way of a transgressor is hard, but the path of the righteous is smooth. It cannot be smooth if I'm not going to learn how to surrender to his lordship and authority. If I continue to oppose God and his word, it becomes a hard life. And I struggle in areas of my life. I shouldn't struggle because I refuse to let go of myself. My God, my God. Defining death structures and strongholds. Defining death structures and strongholds. Because the enemy's ultimate desire is to is to cause death to lives and visions, we need to understand death structures. I talked about this last week. A death structure is created when the devil builds upon the past. A death structure, your stronghold, your fortress, your captivity, your bondage, your chains and shackles, are only are in place when you give the enemy the power to build a death structure in your life, to build upon the things of the past. I remember talking to people before in the streets that I ran across, and, and they said, yeah, before I came to Christ, oh, it was so much better living, living in, in the going to the clubs, it was so much better smoking my weed, drinking my alcohol, it was so much better fornicating and adultery and all this stuff. Because that's what they were so used to. It was easy to do that. But when Christ came to their life, they said, I don't know. Ever since I came to Christ, my life seemed to got worse. It's like everything going wrong in my life. What can happen been happening. And I gave the response to the individual, change your confession. Change your confessions. Gravitate to the things that produces life in Christ Jesus in you. And allow the Holy Spirit to connect you with the right people to bring encouragement and not destruction in your life. And they won't hear nothing else after that. So they walked away. But it's the truth. If all I know is gloom and doom, before I came to Christ, it's still there. Until I've truly been converted. If I've been truly converted by the Spirit of God, the same old patterns of the past that once were built in my life have been destroyed. God came with a wrecking ball, a spiritual wrecking ball, and tore down the walls so everything could be exposed. 
and he brought you freedom from the inside out. Only if you allow the Spirit of God to set you free, you can be free. Satan seeks to build upon past failures. He seeks to build upon past failures. Have you heard, heard been around people, been around people, and all they talk about is their failures? It's like they're just in a dark place and can't seem to rise above it. And all they know is the bad stuff that happened in their life. And the more you try to bring life and encouragement to them, they don't want to hear that. But then when you hear everything that I say is negative, everything that's foul, everything that's broken, I want to keep, keep nursing, cursing, rehearsing those things. Because what you're talking about, it doesn't identify what, what I've been through. Those type of people are in a place of disappointment. In a place of weakness and refuse to let go. One time I was in that place, in a dark place of disappointment, discouragement. I went through divorce twice and went through being put out of the house and just abandoned, just left, as if I just say left for dead because I had nothing to really live on. But thank God for Jesus because the grace of God saw me in my weakness, saw me in my struggles, saw me in my abandonment, and love lifted me and put me on a straight street called straight and put me on a pathway to declare his word and righteousness, even in a dark place, to let people know that God can still deliver. He still can bring you out if you have a desire to be brought out. You got people who are familiar with it. They're comfortable with it. They love being around people that are in a dark place. They love talking to people in a dark place. They love to sympathize with people in a dark place. They, they because they're familiar spirits. The threefold demonic core are familiar spirits: Jezebel, Athaliah, Delilah, three strong demonic forces who bands together to stop you from fulfilling your potential. Because they don't want to see you rise above your circumstance. They build upon your failures, your past mistakes, upon your disappointments and your weaknesses. He attempts to establish a strategy to become a structure resulting in death to visions and abortion of your destiny. He was abortion of destiny. I was talking to pastor earlier, my pastor earlier, and we got into a discussion about how some people call themselves leaders in the church and you have an issue with other people in the church and you stop walking in your, your full potential of your calling. You do a little bit because I can do that, but I'm not going to give the full potential of my, my calling and purpose to the church because I, I retired from the church. I feel like I retired from certain areas of ministry. So you get in that in your mindset, well, I don't have to do it. So the pastor made a statement so aborting your anointing. And I said, you know what? That's a good message. Aborting your anointing. Because some people get to the place in their mindset, they feel they have the right to abort their anointing and use the peace they want to use to satisfy their self-righteousness. And that's a shame. That's a shame when you get to a place where you're self-righteous, you feel like to turn it on and turn it off like a light switch. I can flip it on, I can flip it off. Because I don't have to give the full potential. Because I'm doing this thing for me. I can care less about you, care less, care less what you think about me. I'm going to do what I want to do. That, that's sad. It's really sad when people get to that place. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind, right? That's Romans chapter uh, 12 and 1. It says, That you may prove what is good and separate and perfect will of God. Romans 12 and 1, right? So if we get to the place in ourselves, would not allow us to be conformed, screen to a system of belief of the world, then I can allow the mind of Christ to dominate the mind of the flesh. Did you catch what I just said? If I don't allow my mindset to be squeezed into the system of the world belief, the way they live, the standards, and, and, and the boundaries they set up for people in the world, I can allow the mind of Christ to dominate the mind of the flesh, to overpower it, 
and to break down the demonic threefold core in my life to set me free. Because I, I was I was talking about earlier about how a rope, a threefold core, a rope, a threefold rope is so strong and so powerful. It can pull a vehicle, it can pull a boat, it can keep the boat from moving from the dock. That's because that rope is so the rope is so thick. It's about, about like that, it's about that thick. And that rope has the ability to keep you at bay where you can't drift away. God's Spirit, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, when they're banded together in your life, they become a three, threefold cord in your life of expectations, blessings and favor, hope, dreams and visions being fulfilled, calling to your life, manifesting. So everything that God has for you, you're entitled to it. And God says, you know what? We come together to make it happen. But when the enemy comes with a threefold demonic cord in your life, he entraps you. He ensnares you. He entangles you. He keeps you from moving. That's why he puts shackles on you. Because I don't want you to break free. You got shackles and you got chains to the wall. You ain't going nowhere. No matter how much resistance you have, no matter how much you struggle, try to re pull yourself loose, it is not going to work. Because the enemy has a grip on you. Amen? Once the structure is in place, he seeks to gain illegitimate authority over your life. Once the structure is in place, he seeks to gain illegitimate authority over your life. A stronghold is any argument that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. It is a fortified place Satan builds to exalt himself. He attempts to possess our lives and appear bigger than God. Woo-wee! He appears, but he's not bigger than God. He makes you think through deceptive conversations. He's bigger than God. What did he do with Eve in the garden? He enticed her to do something God told him not to do to make it seem like if you do this, you're going to be like God. But the problem was, she was already like God and already creating God's image and likeness. So how can you be something you already are? And when, when I saw this, it made me think about how many times hypocrites, <coughs> people in movies, they're hypocrites, right? Because that's not their true character. That's not their real life outside of the studio. When you get into the studio, they have to pretend to be a character in the movie of something they're not in order to entertain people, right? Enemy does the same thing in the church. He'll bring people in the church to make them sheep with wolves and sheep clothing to pretend to be on the Lord's side of rhythm against God. And then peepers. I remember years ago I was teaching about strongholds, and one of the strongholds was peepers. And what that is, is when people are sitting back, they're looking and learning and looking for the opportune time to violate your life. They're peeping, they're watching you, watching every move, watching your conversation, watch how you, watching how you act, watch how you walk. Watch how you, how you do certain things so they can have a reason to justify why they don't go to church. Ain't that something? When God gave that to me, I said, you know what, that's, that's deep because a lot of people do that. He attempts to possess our lives and appear to be bigger than God. And if he can do so, he gains hold on us. Once we allow Satan to have seat, a seated position Listen to this. This is good. Once we allow Satan to have a seated position, we have allowed him to be enthroned in our lives. Once we allow Satan to have a seated position, he is enthroned over us. He must be pulled down. That stronghold got to be pulled down, got to be stripped, got to be broken. 
The only way it can happen, when you identify what is it that's influencing you to keep walking from God. What is it that got you in the complacency of sin? What is it that you got you in a dark place where you can't see the light of day? Because the word said Jesus, looking unto Jesus, who's the author of our faith, who for joy is set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and now is set at the right hand of God, enthroned in heaven. Right? Think that Hebrews 4 and 2. He's seated in a place of authority. He's seated in a place of royalty. And guess what? Because he foreknew you, ordained you, called you, qualified you, justified, sanctified you by the Spirit, you are seated in Christ Jesus in the place of royalty, the place of authority. And the only way you can see yourself out of that place when you allow the enemy to deceive you with false illusions and delusions. You got a lot of delusional people in church. They're delusional when it comes to living right. And they're living according to their illusions, the false pretenses the enemy shows them, the false perceptions. And God is trying to show us a stronghold is a castle or fortress and anything on which one rely on. So the enemy wants you to rely on your stronghold. Make you feel you can't live without your stronghold. I got to have my issue. I got to have my sickness. I got to have my disease. I got to have my problem. So I, I allow people to talk about me, put me down, and to become okay. Because I'm, I'm familiar with that spirit of slander. I'm familiar with the spirit of brokenness. So the more they break me, the more comfortable I become in that mess. And God is saying tonight, as a child of God, that's not where I put you. That's not the place I called you to be. I called you to rise above slander, persecution, shame, guilt, condemnation. I call you to rise above those things. Did you not allow anybody to cripple you from the things of the past? I hate when people come to me and want to remind me of all my mistakes and things I've done in the past, and that's all they see about you. They don't see the good things you're doing for God's kingdom. They don't see the, the hear the sermons you're preaching to edify God's kingdom, to glorify his people, to build them up in their faith. They don't see all of that. All they see is the gloom and doom of the past because they're blinded by the enemy. But I come to tell you tonight, he made you worthy. Therefore, you worth it all. You worth the, you worth the suffering he endured on the cross. You worth the persecution he went through before he went to the cross. You worth the crown of thorns in his head. You worth the, the piercing in his side. You worth the dying. For I sin and iniquity. Why? Because he made you worthy. That he can close you in his righteousness. So you might have been through a broken relationship, broken marriage, broken home, family jacked up, children going astray, finances messed up, about to lose your house, can't pay your bills. You might be in that place, right? But I come to tell you something tonight. We have a God who calls himself Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh is the God of provisions. When you begin to turn your focus from all of the mess in your life and refocus, retrain your thought life to focus. You hear what I just said? Key word, retrain. Retrain your thought life to focus on the word of God, what God has spoke to you in his word. Everything that God has said, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. You sow little, you get little. So abundance, you get abundance. If you don't have nothing to give, and you give your time to help somebody, that's giving. God honors that. And in response, 
Guys, I know you want to give in the church. I know you want to give to help somebody else in that situation, but you don't have it right now. You know what I'm going to do? As Jehovah Jireh, I'm going to call somebody else to bless you. Also, you get a check in the mail. Or somebody walk me and say, hey, God told me to get this to you. Why? Because God heard your cry. He heard the response of your heart for your love for him to want to be a giver, to want to bless somebody else. But we got a lot of stingy folk in the church, God. A lot of stingy folk. Folk don't want to give nothing. They come to church, hear a good word, hear good music, and won't give a dime. And know they got it. And for this reason, I'm going to close with this one thought. And we're going to pick up on this next week. God told Amos, he said, tell the people, he said, why is my house desolate and your house is full? He said, why are you doing things your way and neglecting me? For this reason, I blew on your finances. To where your pox became like pox with holes. He says, everything you thought you had, I blew on it. Did it blow away? That's the judgment of God. There is consequences for rebellion. There's consequences for pridefulness, stubbornness, not surrendering to his lordship and authority. I said it before. God knows our heart. He knows we're going to mess up. Do not allow yourself or anyone else to put you in a spiritual prison of bondage to the things of your mistake. Because God has set you free. And Jehovah Jireh provided the liberty for you. Jehovah Jireh provided the food you needed to put on your table. Jehovah Jireh provides the clothes to put on your back on your children's back. Jehovah Jireh provides your transportation, the fuel to put in your car. Jehovah Jireh provides for your ministry. Anything you do for God, God says, I got you. Because the word tells me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's a promise. That's a promise we have from God. If you seek him, he'll provide. You're right, cuz. My provider. That's right. He's my provider. He will provide, provide, and keep on providing. You know what that word, uh, uh, Jireh, is? Not just provisions. It's peace. It's healing. It's deliverance. It's victory. It's overcoming faith. All that in Jehovah Jireh. And God says, when you trust me with all your heart, Lean not your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me. I'll direct your path. I'll direct you to people of wealth. I'll direct you where you'll be around people. You got a business trying to get off the ground, want to make it successful. I'll direct you to the right resources at the right time in the right season. And you'll connect with the right people at the right time who got what you need, the connection you need to get your business off the ground. But you got to believe it for yourself. But not only that, you got to surrender. Submit yourself unto the Lord. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. If you don't submit, how can God release the promise in your life? If you don't yield to his, his lordship, his authority, how can God give you what you want him to give you if you're not obeying him? Obedience is greater than sacrifice. I would rather obey God, slip up, make a mistake, repent, and God restore me. Then not repent, keep making a mistake, and stay in my mess. You hear what I just said? God loves us so much. The Holy Spirit inside of you is such a perfect gentleman. He keeps drawing you. He's drawing you. If I be lifted up, I'll draw him in unto me. He's drawing you right back to himself. You make a mistake, he's still drawing you. You slip up, he's still drawing you. He still loves you. He still care for you. He's still there for you. And he'll never turn his back on you. Because he cares about you more than you care about yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. God bless you, Pastor Apostle Robinson. God bless you. It's so amazing when we get the revelation and the understanding of the stronghold the enemy has put in our hearts to destroy us. God would not 
allow you to be tempted above what you can't handle. He knows your strength. He knows your weaknesses. I don't know if you ever noticed when you go for a job interview, they always ask you, what is your, your strength and what's your weakness? They always ask that question. And if you don't have a weakness, they dismiss you. They don't even want to hire you because they know everybody got a weakness. And God says, you know what? Because I love you so much, I took your weakness and put it on me. I knew that that that, that habit you're gonna have down the road in your life, that no good man gonna you know, no good woman in your life. I know this is gonna happen, I knew this situation gonna take place. But I have a remedy called the blood of the lamb. The same blood has been applied to the doorposts of your heart to wash away all of your sin and iniquity and set you free from the inside out that you can walk in the liberty what Christ has made you free. We're going to pick up next week talking more about this stronghold. Then we're going to go into the battleground. It's between the ears. You hear what I just said? The battleground is between the ears. If you don't have this book, get this book. The three, breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Deliah. Breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. And you can find that book on Amazon. You can get it in the Kindle version. You can get it on Apple, Apple uh, tablets or Apple phones. It's in different platforms. You can buy the, the physical book if you want the book. And also, I encourage you to get some stars. If this lesson is really bless you tonight, don't forget to get those stars on here tonight. I tell you, this is a great lesson. And I don't know about you, but God is going to continue to break some things off of all of our lives. He's going to break some things as we learn how to surrender and listen. The key is listening. I hate to be around people who always talk, 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 talk. And when you got something to say, they don't want to listen. They don't want to hear you, but I want you to hear me. And God is saying tonight, don't allow yourself to be victimized by the enemy but allow the holy spirit to empower you keep standing on the word of truth and i guarantee the truth will set you free it's a guarantee if you want to be free tonight and you know you're one of those who have been bound by the demonic cord of the enemy and you're ensnared and been entangled in a dark place tonight i encourage you if you listen to the voice of the holy spirit God will set you free. There's nothing too hard for God. When Jesus healed the blind man, and, and, and he was in the marketplace, and people said, who, aren't you the one who was blind? And who did this? So I don't know who he was, but all I know, I was blind, but now I can see. And that can be your story tonight, by praying this simple prayer with me. If you know you're in a dark place, you might be a backslider in rebellion. You've been messed up, living a, a, a life that's not of God for a long time, and you want to be free tonight, you can be free by praying this simple prayer. So repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Restore me, revive me, save me, deliver me, set me free from the inside out. Allow the power of the Holy Spirit to perfect me in your will that you will be glorified. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer. You just got restored. You just got born again if you wasn't born again. And God loves you. And that's the heart that he's looking for, a heart that surrenders and says, Lord, I need you. Come into my heart. And he does it instantly. The change is a process. Your life will change in the process. As you continue to draw near to God, he draws nigh to you. Begin to gravitate to things, educational things that feed your mind and your spirit to help build you up in your heart to 
follow after Jesus Christ, I guarantee the shackles, the blindness, the scales will fall from your eyes, the strongholds will be broken, the struggles will be released from you. Not saying you're not going to have habits and addictions come your way, but it become less and less of an influence to you. Because now you accept Jesus Christ, the Lord of Savior, so now he got to fight for you, for your victory. Because the battle is in him. He's our victorious warrior who conquered all of our foes. So you already got the victory. Now you got to fight to believe the victory. Fight to believe that he already conquered. Fight to believe he already set you free. And begin to walk in it day by day. The words of the day, words are level to my feet and a light unto my pathway. And that's a true statement. God's word is a lamp unto your feet, light unto your pathway. And every day is a promise that God has for you as a child of God. Good to see my grandson on here tonight too, King Joshua. God bless you, young man. Amen. My cousin Troya, God bless you. Amen, Minister Troya. Connell, bless you. Danny, God bless you all. Amen. Denise and Deborah, Shonda, God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Yeah, I had trouble in the beginning getting online with my uh, Sling Studio. I don't know if for some reason kept disconnected from the internet. But thank God for a backup. I always have my backup. I thank you, Jesus, for the backup. The Lord said, go right online, set yourself up on lock, and go live. And it worked without any issue, any, any hesitation. But continue to keep us in your prayers, my pastor and his family in your, in your prayers, our ministry in your prayers, my dad, my mom in your prayers. My mom is having issues with her breathing. And want to keep lifting her up. Um, she, she's, her, her lungs has been impacted with pneumonia, but she got over pneumonia. But now her lungs have been weakened to where she got to have the oxygen everywhere she go, even to the bathroom now. So I just want to continue to lift her up in our, in our prayers that God will heal her lungs, strengthen her body. Because she's really going through a, a, a challenge in her physical health. And the enemy's really been trying over and over to kill, steal, and destroy her life. But my mother's the prayer warrior. She's a fighter. Her name, Ruth Emery. When Ruth Emery come across your mind, begin to pray for her. And Pastor Charles Emery, begin to pray for him, my dad. You know, he had a stroke six, over six years ago, about six years ago, and he can't speak that well because the enemy, you know, has struck him, but he can't speak. But he's still aware of what's going on. He still loves God, still praying in the way he knows how. So I encourage you, keep on praying for one another. Keep on encouraging one another. Keep standing on the Word of God. And I guarantee you, find yourself living a fruitful and a more freer life in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anyone got any questions before we go? Any questions? Thank you for your star, Sister Davis. God bless you. Anyone else want to sow a star on tonight? Feel free to do so. The stars are, are add up to money for the ministry, even for the materials. I've been getting these books. These books are not free. I buy these books that I teach out of. So they help support the ministry. And I thank God for my pastor even giving me the ability to do this live stream for our, our church and, and i tell you it's been a blessing because it's been rich to me helped me grow in a lot of knowledge and wisdom for the for the ministry god, god bless you apostle robinson again for tuning in tonight as well so i tell you you know when you begin to walk in obedience god will begin to open up avenues for you to for ministry to help you grow in grace and in your calling your purpose he has created you for we all have a purpose we all have a calling it is up to you to pray for God to reveal to you what that purpose is, what that calling is, and that you walk in it by faith. And I guarantee when you do that, the Lord himself will perfect your life in the kingdom, the things concerning you. Amen. 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 So I'm going to close in a word of prayer, and then I'll be, we'll be dismissed. So Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you tonight, oh God, for many of those who need healing today, oh God, my mother, my father. To continue to touch their bodies, touch my mother's lungs, oh God, to heal her, her lungs, oh God. You are the mender of a broken heart. You're able to, Father, restore what the enemy has came to, to, to kill still and destroy her body, God. You said with the canker worm, the swarming locust, the locusts, and the creeping locusts have devoured, God. You said that remain, God, you would cause them to blossom. God, we ask that you touch right now her body that will repair itself, oh God, by the Spirit of living God. And many others deal with afflictions tonight, oh God. Send your anointing to shine this back, oh God, with the sciatic nerve. Father, bring relief, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Heal, oh God. Touch in that area, oh God, that's causing the most pain and dis-ease and discomfort, God. Bring relief in all their bodies with different illnesses, arthritis, oh God, lupus and diabetes, heart condition, God. Father, my allergies, Father, got cancer. Father God, sickle cell, Father God, doesn't matter what the illness is tonight, we speak healing in the atmosphere around your people, God, who hear this word. 
and hear this prayer tonight, oh God, that you, Father, get to touch in a supernatural way to, to speak life, to call it to manifest that their bodies will be healed. We know that your word says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Now do it, God. Manifest your power. Send your anointing right now, God. Destroy the yoke of infirmity. Break the back of the enemy off their lives, oh God. Just hold them in captivity to infirmities, God. Set them free. Strengthen their knees, oh God. Re release the edema of those who got swelling in their legs and their joints, oh God, and their arms, oh God. Release it, God. Those who need a job, open the door for them, God. Those who need resources, provide for them, God. We ask that you do it for your glory, God. And we thank you that it is so according to the word of God. Be it done according to our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, you all have a great, blessed night on purpose for a purpose because you were created with purpose for purpose and on purpose. So walk in your purpose. And I guarantee you will always find yourself having a great day on purpose because you trust in the Lord God who is the God of purpose. Have a good night. Shalom. Amen. God bless you, son. Amen. Amen.